I support those parents who probably want distance learning until there's a cure for this virus. Um, losing one child to sickness from it is one child too many, in my opinion. And I would have supported a plan that kept everyone out of the schools until a cure. But I recognize that, you know, it's a parent's decision. Parents, um, there are parents who want their children to be in schools. And you have, you and your team have definitely provided um, an option for parents, which is um, the most, in my opinion, that you can really do. Um, you know, with flu season and virus season among us, um, I thought it was a smart plan to um, put this into a January um, date when we talk about all children coming in. So, you know, I hesitate about being supportive because I care about all children and just the thought of any one of them being ill just gives me chills. But we've heard from parents who want their children to be back in the schools and you've laid out a plan. And um, um, I would just um, ask the board that um, we monitor this um, as the country changes from day to day as it relates to this virus because safety comes first as far as I'm concerned. And so I, I really want to thank you. I'm, I'm glad we put in the components. We, we're getting, I believe, as, a, as an educator and an administrator, uh, I believe that we are covering the bases that we need to cover uh, instructionally, uh, that we're meeting the needs of the family. We're continuing to feed families. Uh, we're continuing to update our internet services. We're continuing to address the needs for uh, those across the board who need synchronous and asynchronous learning, face-to-face uh, -face learning, uh, all at the same time in the middle of a pandemic, um, which is a, is a remarkable feat. I think people are now realizing, I think they realized it before, but you know, it's, it's you don't miss your water till your well runs run dry. And I think people are seeing the incredible value that public education is to a community. And so, um, you know, that, that's a good thing that has come out of this. Um, and again, just commend you to the work that you've done. I like uh, Ms. Boyd's statement about revisiting it. I'm not, the 25% capacity might be driven now by what the guidance we're getting from uh, CDC and et cetera. Uh, I am open to you know, looking at those capacity numbers as uh, the health professionals tell us it's safe to do. Um, but I think the only real approach is to, and to be able to manage all that is to take a phased approach, one that takes capacity into uh, consideration. There is a, we're spending a lot of time as we should be addressing the needs of those with some of the most significant needs. But I want to point out, and I'd like to, for us to recognize that there is a significant population of our students who are very unengaged at the moment. And I think that's going to end up being um, a, a serious issue in the future. And I think that's something that we really need to address. Whether that means bringing them back in the building sooner or not, I think there are other ways to do that. Um, but I, I, I'm... I'm very fearful of what that's doing to a lot of our children. I've talked with a few teachers recently and the amount of work that they're doing is unparalleled um, compared to years past. Um, I know sometimes, you know, we, like Mr. Bailey said, we are hearing from a lot of people and I'm not sure that everybody realizes the amount of work that teachers are doing to do the, the synchronous, the asynchronous, to learn a whole new platform, to do, to do the new platform and put grades into PowerSchool um, and to try to keep it engaging. And I know of at least I'd, just three teachers who I happen to run into because you know we all have limited social circles now um, and who have gone out to students' homes who have not uh, signed in yet. 
um, or who are having trouble turning things in, who weren't engaged, and they have taken it upon themselves to go out and meet with students or to try to meet the students where they are to get them back engaged. So I just wanted to do a little bucket filling there. Thank you to everybody who is working so hard. And I agree, I, I hope that we will revisit this as it becomes as it comes closer to January. And if you know, November is going very well, that maybe we can revisit and do, do have more students in the building if that is, um, if we really want, if we have a lot of desire for that. And I believe we might. All right. And just to, just to piggyback on what you were saying, Janet, I mean, of course, um, I have seen firsthand the hard work that the teachers are putting in. Um, I have, you know, my three kids in the three different levels of, of schools here in Fredericksburg. Um, and I just, um, I, I just want to let, you know, let everyone know that um, there will be Marcy, uh, Dr. Catlett, right, professional development to help the teachers figure out how to negotiate all that we're putting on their plate um, as far as the synchronous and the in-person learning and um, you know, all of the, all of the scheduling that will come from, from right. trying to juggle all of that. 